Harlem in the 80s was depressed economically, but collective culture. This was before gentrification. Because my mom was a Christian, it was a sin for me to play the blues. I'm serving the devil. I was trying to figure out who this guy was. Sterling was just a hell of a guitar player. Somebody took me aside and said, you know who you're playing with? You're playing with Sterling McGee. You know, he was on Ray Charles's Tangerine label. He played with Etta James, Marvin Gaye. He backed up James Brown at the Apollo, and they would point down the block at the Apollo Theater. We both found it intensely exciting to be making music on the street. It takes a lot of courage or a lot of ignorance to the environment you hear. This white man, what is he doing? Is he helping him or is he stealing the music? It drew us. It was like a magnet. I'm really just blown away by what I'm hearing and seeing. We suddenly were recognized. It's called co-acceleration. You know, that's when the music swings. It's a very big old word that ain't worth a damn. 3,000 people in Central Park, and it's like, we're really making it. I don't do it for money. I don't do it for fame. This is my mission. The last gig we play, he missed some lyrics. He doesn't lose lyrics. She gave me a look like oh, something was wrong. Sterling had really kind of fallen off the grid. And what are you going to do when somebody just disappears? You know, America's a tortured place racially, and we can't know kind of where that's going to lead. For us to try to figure out tomorrow is a waste of efforts. Go with the flow and it'll work out. That's, you know, the blues ethos. You got to keep walking forward. Because all we have is our life. If you ain't got your life, you ain't got nothing. <laughs> And I really love the man. It's caught in the crossfire.